Today on the workbench, we're going to do a review and with any luck, test video from this Canon VC200. Before I get started with that, I would like to say thank you to all my current subscribers and my new subscribers. I appreciate your support immensely. Now with that said, let's move forward. This camera came out in 1984. It sold for $720. This camera sports a SATICON, which is a image tube. Modern day cameras, both video and still, use a CCD. Prior to the CCD hitting the market, which was uh, mid to late 80s, the industry used tubes from, I think, 1932 forward. I think the tubes, what they produce, are really cool. Probably not going to be as sharp as modern day gear, but when you buy into this, you already know, especially when it comes to consumer grade products. As you can see, this camera is really petite in comparison to other models that were out at the time. They were shoulder mounted cameras. They were big, they were bulky. And on top of that, you had to lug around a VTR, a video tape recorder, and its batteries to run not only the VTR, but this camera. To show you how tiny this camera is, from 1999, Sony came out with this CCD dash TRV58 Video 8 camera. And you can see size comparison. They're in the same ballpark. Outside that big turret, they're pretty, pretty close. And when you stack lens to lens, even though I've got this lens hood on, they're the, the same size, same length, and practically the same height. So as you can see, pretty awesome in its day. Let's go ahead and do the overview on it. On this side of the camera, we have some lovely gold silk screening. This actually was not the high-end camera at the time. There was one more that offered more manual settings and I think it sold for double the money. Here we have the lens. This is a autofocus camera, which was another treat back in its day. I don't think it was the, the first autofocus, but it wouldn't surprise me if it was pretty doggone close. I would have to do research to confirm that. We have manual focus ring right here. And here, oh, real quick, uh, on the barrel, we have metrics and feet uh, for gauging uh, your distance if you're just eyeballing it. Up here we have the zoom in, zoom out with this cool little lever. And this lens covers 8.5 all the way up to 51 millimeters. It also incorporates macro. Some of the other cameras, when it reached the, the macro, it would hit a stop, and this one is to no exception. However, on other cameras I'm familiar with, you would just continue on pushing it just past that stop, and it would bump into macro mode. This one is different. This one, you pull this lever out, and then you continue into macro mode. Heard that little snap there. The lens is a f1.2, uh, which is a pretty fast lens for the aperture. You don't really have too much manual control over this camera or over the lens. You do have white balance. You have um, tungsten and uh, fluorescent control. It's also marked indoor, outdoor uh, in the viewfinder and in the manual. The switch right here, if for some reason you're unable to set auto white balance with the button, you can flick the switch to the out position 
and then what it does is internally it drops a, a white filter and then you push the auto white button to allow it to auto white balance. Now, now my copy here, even though externally it's in pristine condition, for electronics of its age, we have weak tube as well as weak capacitors, which means its performance is not as good as it probably was in its day. So when you go to autofocus, it does struggle, especially if the subjects are close. White balancing, it does not do a perfect job. And when you do the white balance internal filter, again, it, it does not produce a, a good white balance. Uh, one other thing to note with the white balance owner's manual dates, instead of using a, um, a gray card, 50% gray card, which you normally would do to set your white balance, it's actually a white piece of paper. So food for thought on that. This bottom switch is to switch it between autofocus or manual focus. When in manual focus, if you're having an issue of getting the subject in focus or you just need to do a down and dirty, you just bump the switch up momentarily, let it focus, release it, and then you're back into manual focus. Buttons here on the side. Most cameras have a rocker switch for zooming in and zooming out. This one does not. We have our wide and telephoto switch here. These are nice soft rubber buttons. This S stands for speed and that allows you to have fast or slow zoom in, zoom out. Three buttons underneath here are for your built-in titler. I believe it's only a 12 character titler. You also have up underneath here a option to start a uh, stopwatch which does display on screen. I know several cameras from this vintage did offer that feature. I'm not sure what the real world application for that is, but okay. On the back here, we have our on off switch, which also doubles as our gain, normal and high gain, which is great for low light environments, but I would imagine that's also going to introduce some noise which is typical. Here we have our backlight switch on off, same thing to help improve low lighting situations. And we also have a microphone in jack. This is a mono jack and this is a 1 8 mini jack. On this side, we have some more lovely silk screening. And this prompts me to, I forgot to mention one thing. This is a color camera not black and white, it is color. On this side, all we have is just the start and stop record button and a really nice big thumb guard, really cool. On this side, it's just really nice big strap. And this one is not falling apart like most of its age. On this part, we have a nice little finger grip. Ergonomically, it's not bad. The front of the camera, of the hand grip, we have our cable in, or cable out rather. This goes from the video camera into the videotape recorder. And this cap right here is where start and stop remote control. On the front here, this is the autofocus window. And what this does is it shoots out a little infrared beam to gauge how it needs to focus. This is a TTL system or through the lens system. So everything is done through the lens. I wish I could take that off so you could see the tube that's in there. They are really cool. Lens cap with its embossed Canon. Uh, side note, this does offer lens threads. That's 46 millimeter. On my model here, this lens hood, it's plastic. It does unscrew, but I, I don't know if over time or just that's how it was manufactured. It, it's actually slightly bigger. It is a fight to get this thing to go back on. You almost have to, to bend it or to, to smash it on to, to get it to take. So I very seriously doubt I will be adding on filters, but you never know. If I can get this thing working a lot better, I will. On the bottom side, we have this polarity switch. And what this does is depending on how your videotape recorder was wired, you know, the switch on or off, this would take care of that confusion. 
and, and allow you to, to move forward. See here, this one was made July 1984, which was, I think, a couple of months, three months maybe, after they were introduced to market. So it's a fairly older production model. We have our standard one quarter by three fourths threads, standard tripod mount with the uh, lock pin. On the top, we have the turret. Of course, that's not what it's really called. It's the viewfinder. On this, we have the microphone. This is really cool because no foam screen to go bad or try to replace. The bad thing about it is you might have a hard time putting something over that to muffle any wind you may encounter outside. Next to it, we have the tally light or the record light. And while it's recording, the light does blink. Up top again, just in case you missed the, the fact that this might be a cannon. That's right, it's a cannon. Just in case you missed that point. On top of that, we have a cold shoe so you can add an external microphone or lighting. Inside this viewfinder, there is a one inch CRT screen, black and white. So yeah, the viewfinder on this is black and white. On the back side here, we have another tally light. So that's two tally lights so far. One other thing to note on the top here, this is how you adjust the viewfinder. Nice big rubber cup. This one is still malleable. I have gone through and cleaned this and reintroduced oil into them. Hopefully it'll keep it going another 30, 40 years. As you saw earlier in the video, this viewfinder does spin open. This does telescope, not by much, but it is helpful. And it does rotate. As well as pop open. So you can see the CRT screen without this amplification here. Inside here, right there, you could see the actual CRT screen. And on this side, probably can't see it. There is a mirror. Right there. And that reflects the picture. Most common, even in these modern cameras, there is a CRT in that as well. Connecting this up to your VTR, it came with a cable. Uh, this is a six foot cable that came with it and it uses a 10 pin cable. Now you need to be careful when you purchase your cables because they came out 10 pin, 12 pin, 15 pin, etc. So you need to make sure you have the right one for your camera or the right extension cable. You can see here on the front, there's a little key notch and that's how it lines up inside the adapter here. This one just simply pushes on and when you go to take it off, you then pull this back and that unlocks. So on this one, the key lock is up top and now you're ready to go. And that's on there nice and secure. You pull that back and it comes right off. I do not have a videotape recorder for this unit yet. I have my eye on one and uh, with any luck I'll have that. We'll do a future video. What I do have is a camera power supply, which is just as cool. So if you're not going portable, or you don't have the room or, nor want a, another piece of vintage gear, that's fine. You could have this device. Now, there were several brands out there. This one just so happens to be Ambico. Those that are in vintage um, video, TV electronics, you'll, you'll recognize the name. That was the main player back in the, the 80s and I believe on into the 90s. Might even been into the 70s, I'm not sure. Uh, the company history, but I see them often. We have video out 
audio out, which is cool um, that we have the RCA out because then we can plug this into a video capture card. And when I do the test, I'll drag my laptop out and the USB capture device and we'll just record straight to hard drive. We have a remote out. I've not used this. I, I believe it's just simply going to function the, uh, the record button or it could actually uh, toggle on and off. Not sure. We'll have to try that one day. We have the power LED. We have the reciprocating plug from the camera. And then we have the on off. And of course, the model number VVictor-0605. On this device, there, there's nothing else. It's pretty plain. But it's a heavy little guy for its size. So nice, nice good transformer in there. Future plans, I will crack this open. I'll see if there's anything serviceable. I would imagine capacitors, electrolytic, I'll check them out and we'll more than likely replace them. Especially since this does pass video and audio. Want to make sure there's nothing causing bad video problems. The plug on the other end of the cable is nice and big. We have key lock, which matches right there. This one, simple, just plug it in. and tighten the threads. And then hit the switch and you're ready to go. Now I'm gonna do that. I'll hit the switch off screen, but what I'm going to do is try to get this so you can see the screen fire up. Now I will turn my side lights off, but I do have my big studio lights on behind me but it looks like they're not gonna cause that kind of problems. So hopefully I got that angled right where we could all see it. Now I'm gonna hit the switch on the power supply and the switch on the camera. And there you go. I'll take the video cap off. You Kind of see it pulsating. That's also doing it on my end as well. So it's not the camera, the, the video camera recording. And you could see it finally brought up a, a picture, which is my little caddy in front of the camera there. So what you're seeing in the screen is live view as, as it's recording or viewing that image in front of it information you're seeing on the screen you see up top there a flashing awb auto white balance as i stated earlier auto white balance is not functioning too swell let me go ahead and push the button and let's see what it does of course everything's in black and white now i want you to pay attention you see on the side there that little white line at the bottom left that's actually called a needle and that needle actually serves as a couple of uh, uh, functions one, it'll show you your auto white balance when working properly. It'll, uh, it should bump up and down, find a happy medium. It's also your light meter. So when you have, when it's too dark or too bright, it'll, it'll go to the top or the bottom. When it's just right, it's in the middle. Sounds like a childhood book for some reason. Also in focusing mode, that needle at times will fluctuate up and down to help you. I wouldn't count on it a whole bunch, but it's there. So let me go ahead and push the auto white balance button. And you see nothing. It's struggling. Let me go ahead and flick the switch. And yes, I know I should have a white piece of paper and I don't. So here it's engaged. Let me go ahead and push the auto white balance button and pay attention to the needle. And nothing. Turn that up. Put the camera in autofocus mode. Let me zoom in. And you see the camera struggling to focus. Now, this is probably unfair at this point because I might have zoomed in too close for it to autofocus, but you could see that it's trying.
and that fluctuation um, uh, in uh, the CRT screen that is happening in real life. Again, that's not a, an anomaly caused by the digital video camera recording. So go all the way out. Now let me switch this over to manual mode. I'll zoom in. I will hit the toggle switch up for autofocus. And nothing. Go all the way in. Yeah. So let's. Um, I forgot to mention too, when you go into macro mode, the auto focus feature does no longer work. Everything has to be manual mode at that time. So let's go ahead and pull this switch out. And now we're in manual, uh, macro mode. And nothing. So let's grab something, stick it in front of the camera. And let's see if we can get anything. Let me turn my other monitor, my other lights on. There we go. So I have macro mode all the way zoomed in. Let me move the subject closer. Let me focus. Okay, so I'm too close probably. Let me adjust. There we go. That's pretty good. Of course, I, I'm looking through the digital video camera monitor, so I, I can't tell how sharp the focus is, but we could definitely see we're, we're looking at it. How close am I? I'm about, oh, inch and a half, two inches tops from the box. I'm about there. Two fingers, or there about. We're looking at that box. Drop this down, like I said, it is magnified. Now, I mentioned earlier about the tally lights. Inside the monitor here, it will also flash that it's recording. If I push the button, whoops, that's not good. Almost dropped, dropped the cannon on the floor and it hit my digital camera there. So you see at the bottom right hand of the uh, black and white screen, it's flashing record. Disengage and it turns off. Let me back this off. This time we're going to look at the tally light up top. Nice and bright. Disengage. Engage. Now let me spin this camera around and we'll look at the autofocus feature. See if we can get it to actually wiggle jiggle. So we'll grab our, our beta box. And there we go. Let's go ahead and do some sample video. 
Okay, so I have the camera set up outside and we're going to do some test video with it. Before I do so, let me show you my configuration. I have the camera plugged in to the power supply that I showed you on the bench. The audio I have into a two into one, so I capture both channels. Have it running into this USB capture card. This is a Diamond VC500. We'll come over here to the camera. Now, because I'm tethered with only a, a six foot cord, which as you see, my configuration is not very far. There's not gonna be much I can do to look at, uh, aim the camera to look at, but I'll do what I can. With that said, let's go ahead and switch over to that camera. I will first start off with the onboard microphone and then I'll switch over to my lapel microphone that I'm currently using. All right, so we got to see we got to see the camera power up. And the camera's in manual focus. Uh, no. It's in autofocus. So what we're looking at is a fence. Let me tilt this down. Maybe it's getting confused with the uh, shrubbery, the trees past it. I, I don't think so. I think we're just waiting for it to, to warm up. Now, let me go ahead and plug in the external microphone, because again, uh, right now it is a windy day. Not sure how it's handling the wind. 